Well, a friend of mine in Chicago told me that someone she knew had an idea for a photo book and had convinced various prominent photographers to contribute to the book, but he said that he would set up the models. And my friend said, oh, I think you'd be perfect for this. Why don't you talk to this guy about the book? So I talked to the guy about the book and he said, I'd like to have you work with Robert Maplethorpe. At the time I had been going to photo auctions quite a bit and had a friend who had a fine photography gallery. And so I asked him if he thought Maplethorpe would be a good person to do this with. He said, yeah, great. He's a good photographer. He's fabulous. So I went over to Robert's studio on Bond Street. And we chatted a little bit. Marcus Leatherdale was working as his assistant at the time. And then Robert showed me a portfolio of his work which was a real mixture. He was doing a lot of work with Lisa Lyon at the time. He showed me some portraits and he showed me some of his better known erotic work, which I thought was very much distinguished by formal and beautiful compositions, however raunchy the subject might be. So, once I had looked at his work and said, yes, I want to work with him, we set up a time for me to go and do a preliminary photo shoot. Yes, I liked him very much. He was a charming guy. He was also very interested in the business side of photography. And since I had recently finished an MBA, we had a lot to talk about in terms of the economics that are at work in selling photographs. Robert and I talked about the financial aspects of donating photographs to a museum for tax reasons. He was quite a savvy business person. He was one of the first of the modern photographers who additioned his works. You know, of course, in photography, it's difficult to put a value on a fine photograph because it could be reproduced many, many times. But he got around that by declaring that he would just produce an edition of so many photographs and then he numbered each of the prints. So he was rather ahead of his time with that. He also had quite a large collection of vintage photographs, especially Julia Margaret Cameron. Julia Margaret Cameron, she was an important 19th century photographer who did quite romantic, mostly portraits, but a wide range of photographs. And Sam Wagstaff had been collecting her. So Robert inherited quite a lot of photos from Sam Wagstaff. And in his portraiture, I think he's very influenced by Julia Margaret Cameron. Often he has something going on with the, the hands and the line of the eyes in strong relationship to each other compositionally. So it was sort of dreamy, the um, portrait. He was very easy to work with. The first photos we did were portraits, straight ahead portraits. Actually, I still have the dress that I was wearing in those portraits. Well, there was a second photo shoot, which was nudes. He had set up quite a nice setting. He had an antique tablecloth hanging from the wall, which had a subtle texture in it. And then a, a chair that was rather tall and narrow sort of craftsman style. And there was quite a lot of texture in the floorboards of his studio. And the sun was coming in the windows 
very strongly it was the middle of the day. I called in sick to my corporate job in order to do that session with him. When I was in college, I occasionally modeled for a life drawing class. And at the time I did that, it seemed really clear to me that the people drawing me weren't seeing nude me. They were seeing an object that they wanted to capture. So I didn't really feel very bashful about doing the nude session. I was very aware of what he was producing. And as I recall, I think I looked at contact sheets with him before he completely decided on the images. And then he gave me one print from the portrait session and one print from the nude session. My wonderful ex-husband, Legs, had them framed for me. So they've been hanging on my wall ever since then. Cool. So we're done.